Hello and welcome to COP4708. In previous sessions, we talked about creating databases from spreadsheets and forms, where we identify the entity or entities to be tracked in the system. Then we find the attributes, functional dependencies, and relationships. After that, we created a database model and converted that model into design. The design was translated into SQL code that can be understood by a database management system such as Oracle and SQL Server 2008. And we implemented the code in Oracle. We also learned how to manipulate the database through different uh, DML statements, data manipulation language statements. In this session, we will talk about, uh, more about existing database and how to assess the table structure, can the rows, and denormalize data if needed. In Chapter 3, we discussed the relational model, described modification anomalies, and discussed normalization using the BCNF and 4NF. In this chapter, we will apply these concepts to the design of databases that are created from existing data. <coughs> when you have tables of existing data to be uh, stored in a new database, uh, should the data be stored as received or should it be transformed for uh, storage, uh, should we combine or split tables? Those are a uh, few of many questions that uh, will be asked by the administrator, the database administrator on how to uh, understand that the, the existing database and how to migrate it to uh, be integrated with the new database or with the new database management system. To begin with, assess the tables, structure, and content which will determine the number of rows and the number of columns and their type. To count the number of rows in an existing table in a database, we use count uh, and asterisk function. To know what kind of columns that exist in a table, we use the select asterisk to display all the columns in the table. But if we have a table with millions of rows using the SELECT statement with the asterisk, we'll try to display all of these columns which might take forever, besides it might freeze your computer. Instead we can display the top 10 or 50 using the SELECT statement, but with specifying the display to the top 10 only. Once we display the columns in an existing table, we can actually identify the primary key, candidate key or alternative keys, and functional dependencies. It's always good to verify your finding by interviewing database users to understand more about the different forms and tables that they, they use on a daily basis. The users can also provide you with the referential integrity constraints, what's allowed and what's not allowed. Let's look at the example that we used in Chapter 3, uh, which is the SKU data table and the buyer. Let's assume that we don't know how many rows in the SKU data table and would like to get the count of the number of rows and save in some uh, place called numRows where we can uh, see or uh, uh, browse or look at. So to count the number of rows, we will uh, use the select statement with the count function and we save the results in a new column called numRows. We can limit the number of rows displayed to 5 by using the top function to specify the number of rows I would like to see. By looking at the tables and the columns, we can identify the functional dependencies, primary key and foreign key. 
we can also check the validity of the assumed referential integrity constraints by finding any foreign key value that might violate the foreign key constraint. In the code, we, all, we will check the buyer column from the SKU data table to see if it matches buyer name in the buyer table. Remember that we can use the function not in to verify and value that uh, that doesn't exist uh, in the domain. The condition will be that the SKU data uh, dot buyer should be equal to the buyer dot buyer name. Since we are dealing with existing database, the question will be what am I dealing with what kind of database some of the database can uh, databases can be updatable uh, altered or changed other cannot be changed but can be read from this we can define the database as either updatable database or read only database if updatable then we are allowed to make changes and in this type of database you would like to have the tables normalized so when you make a change in one table it will check for the integrity of the data and alter other tables based on that while in the read only database you want to retrieve the data as soon as possible <coughs> so having the data in one table is not problem actually it's faster than retrieving the data from more than one table in other words, normalization is not recommended. Example for updatable databases will be the ATM transactions, while an example for read-only databases will be reports, queries, and data mining. Designing updatable databases. For the updatable databases, normalization is recommended, but um, what are the advantages and disadvantages of normalization? The advantages of normalization are eliminating modifications, anomalies, and mistake in the data entry uh, that will be checked using the constraints uh, that we created to match the data from different tables. And that will reduce duplicates data, duplicated data, which uh, will save uh, the file space. The disadvantages of normalization is the complicated SQL code needed to access different tables and join them in one query and that's an extra work that will slow the application retrieval for data, reduce the efficiency of the query. This is an example for not normalized data which can be actually normalized and split into two tables. The first table will be item and the second table will be repair. The item number will be the foreign key that connects the two tables together. The two tables has been created but the data was not copied. To copy the data from the original table, we use the insert into statement, getting the data from the original table equipment to repair and pasting that into the different columns in item table and the repair table. <coughs> we use the BC normal form to control the irregularity and abnormality um, that was generated from the functional dependencies. There are times when normalization is not desirable such as tables with zip codes where they almost never change. In this case anomalies are likely to be caught by uh, normal business practice uh, so why to normalize the data and break into tables when the uh, to display it write extra code to join it again instead you can just leave the data as is which will speed up the application processing
Other times, such as multi-value dependencies, we use the fourth normal form. Since they are uh, very uh, prom problematic, uh, we need to place the value into a separate table. To design a read-only database, <coughs> in the read-only database, we don't need the user to make changes to the data. We need to allow the user to read from the data. The user can query the database, create reports, and explore the database for knowledge or mine for knowledge, uh, but not change anything. This kind of data may be updated from time to time, but not by the users uh, uh, or uh, by a uh, normal user that read only, it's only by administrator, database administrators. <coughs> For read only databases, normalization is really required. In fact, it might be considered a disadvantage since more table will slow reading and query from the database. Denormalization is the joining of uh, data in normalized table prior to uh, storing the data uh, in uh, a warehouse or data warehouse. Uh, the data is then stored in a non-normalized table. This figure shows a snapshot of three normalized tables, student, club, and payment. If I'm reading only from these tables and would like to know the student name, student ID, the club that he is in, and the total amount paid, then I have to write more code, uh, not only uh, to uh, see the uh, these columns in one view, uh, but uh, also to uh, display it in a view, display the view, which will uh, take more time. The best way is to denormalize these tables into one table. Denormalization the data means to join them all in one table. Then copy all the data from the three tables into the new table called payment data. As uh, you can see in this slide, uh, this is the code to um, join them and to copy uh, the data uh, in, into the new uh, denormalized table. <coughs> <coughs> Read-only databases are often designed with many copies of the same data, but with each copy customized for a, specif a specific application. For example, product table which has information about the product itself such as the SKU number and uh, description information about the vendor and information about the quantity and the cost. So we can customize this information to be included in different tables. Examples on customized product tables are uh, the product purchasing, the product usage, the product web, the product inventory. Each table is customized to include the information that we need, although some of the information are similar, but they are uh, grouped in a way that is useful for the company, sometimes based on different departments. When looking at, uh, at an existing data, uh, whether it's updatable or read-only data, you will notice some uh, or all of the following design problems. The multi-values, uh, multi-column, problem, inconsistent values, missing values, general purpose remarks, columns. So let's look at each one separately and see how uh, we can deal with such problems. For the multi-value or multi-column problem, which occurs when multiple values of an attribute are stored in more than one column, such as the employee employee number, name, email, auto one license number, auto two license number, auto three license number, the solution will be uh, like the fourth uh, N uh, table, fourth NF table, um, which will be um, 
a multi-value table or a separate table that have these multi-values. For the inconsistent values, uh, which occurs when different users uh, or different data sources use slightly different forms of the same data value, uh, different coding. Uh, for example, the SQ description corn uh, comma large can or uh, can comma corn comma large or large can corn so the description in these three cases are different uh, or maybe the different spelling of coffee so all these are inconsistent values that we need to check for The inconsistent values are really a problem when dealing with primary key or with foreign key values. To detect, we use one of the following techniques. Referential integrity check that we already discussed for uh, checking keys. Or the SQL group by clause or uh, on uh, suspected columns, for example, the SQ description once we group them under each other, we can see the inc inconsistency. For the missing values or null values, the missing or null values is a value that has never been provided. In many companies, lots of the optional data will be lost or missing unless the data required no one will bother to record it. Null values are ambiguous. It may indicate that a value is inappropriate. For example, data of last childbirth is inappropriate for a male. It may indicate that a value is inappropriate but unknown is appropriate but unknown. For example, data of lost childbirth is appropriate for female but may not be known. It may indicate that the that a value is appropriate and known but has never been entered. Date of lost childbirth is appropriate for female and may be known but no one has recorded that in the database. To check for the null values, we use the SQL keyword is null. For example, the code can be select count asterisk as quantity null count from order item where quantity is null. And that will show you all the missing uh, cells or missing data in uh, a table. A general purpose remarks table or column is a column with a name such as remarks, comments, notes. It often contains important data stored in an inconsistent verbal and verbose way. A typical use uh, is to store data on a customer's interest. Such a column may be uh, used inconsistently. It holds multiple data items and the only way to, to deal with that is to use the fourth normal form uh, to solve such a problem and use the comments or separate the comments in a different table. So those are the problems that we see when we are dealing with existing data, whether it's updatable or read-only data. And um, the different ways that we can handle these problems, um, the different uh, uh, methods uh, through denormalization or uh, writing a code that can uh, enforce the integrity and check on the missing values. That will be all for this session. If you have any questions, please email it to me. Thank you.